Good afternoon, I'm back, Lucha FM, with another episode of the Local to Global Second City Wrestling Series on TW9. I hope you all had a nice weekend, even though the weather was absolutely shocking. Um, and also, thank you to the people who watched the first episode on the AEW Hard Reset TW9 series that I've started. Um, if you haven't watched the first episode, please give it a watch, I would appreciate it. I do appreciate your support and thank you for the people who have watched it already and the people who continue to watch the Second City Wrestling one as well. Um, I know that this Second City Wrestling series is very niche. I know a lot of people prefer prefer um, people to be doing YouTube series on the big companies like WWE and AEW, for example. So that's why I've done the AEW series as well. But for, to make it interesting for me, I have basically got rid of a lot of the, the wrestlers that have been there a while or a lot of the ex WWE wrestlers that have come along and kind of just I suppose tarnished AEW in a way and and I want to try and get back I want to try and get AEW back to how it was before when they were the alternative and not a place where a lot of the ex WWE wrestlers end up going so yeah give us a watch if you haven't already like I said and it's done it's done really well so far but anyway back to this series Second City Wrestling like I said, thanks again for watching. Um, we'll just go, go through the last couple of shows that we did. So we go here. Um, so basically, Frontman Ja defeated Ace Perry to win the heavyweight title. Now, this was meant to be... I originally was wanted this as a title defence, but the show before, which is the one where... Was it the show before? It, no, it wasn't the show before. It was two shows before that. I meant to have frontman Ja defeating Colt Cabana for the to crown him as the first ever champion, but for some reason I must have forgot to put the title on the line. So basically, frontman Ja defeated Ace Perry, which was originally, like I said, I thought it was just a title defense, um, but it wasn't. It was actually him winning the title. So he's now gone on to successfully defend it one other time, and I think that was at the last show. We've also brought in Raven and Countman Tankman. Um, they defeated Frontman Jar and Colt Cabana. I don't think Frontman Jar is going to be champion for much longer. The reason why is I think he is overshadowed now by Rhino, Colt Cabana, and also um, Calvin Tankman as well seems to be a big star. And we've got Shane Taylor as well. So I feel like Frontman Jar will be around it, around the scene, because he's excellent on the mic. But I just think I just don't think he's good enough. I mean, the, the match quality that he like, if you look at the match quality when he's in the singles matches, they're not the best. And I feel like there's other wrestlers out there on the roster that can do better matches. So we'll just see. I might I might keep it on him for a while. I might not. So at least it'll keep you interested. So we'll just have to see how it goes. But we've got our first show of the episode coming up called Payback's a Bitch. And hopefully we can put on a good show. Right, we'll keep it as that one for now, Logan. Booking team meeting. So our new booking team is Cliff Compton, Atticius Koga, Alison Danger and Michael Blanton. Um, just seeing. Right, so after all the bonuses and penalties were applied, the meeting generated a total of 126 creative energy. I assume that's what it stands for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a bit of it on a character idea. So let's have a look. So a safe bet. There's no restrictions on this one. So I can use that for anybody. So we'll leave that for now. We won't bother with the rest. And then what we'll do in a second. What I'll do offline is I will add that character to somebody. Um, locker room instance. Oh, okay. So hold on. can I move this? Ah, oh, there we go. That was lucky. Right, Flip Kendrick was brought before the wrestlers' courts, accused of failing to pick up the share of the tab of the bar. The judge, Cole Cabana, found him guilty and sentenced him to buy everyone after, everyone a drink after the show. And then training, training. Backstage gossip is that Clayton Gaines and Nate Webb had appeared to be separated after a heated argument. Oh, that's not good, is it? Um, okay. The news is that Vita Von Starr and Lord Crew are now dating. Has provoked some light-hearted ribbon backstage. Oh, that's nice. So we're bringing romance to the stage here. Um, apparently, Rip Bryson and Gringo Loco have bonded recently. And then 
Boomer Hatfield gave the locker room a lift by unveiled uh, a series of spot-on impressions of some of his colleagues. Um, to Lynn helped create a great atmosphere backstage when she pulled a great rib on the entire locker room that had everyone laughing afterwards. So that's good. A lot of positive there, just one negative, but that's, that's good. Right, I'm just going to, before I forget, I'm going to pick a wrestler. Who should I? I'll, I'm going to give it to Ace Perry. He's got called momentum. So we go creative idea, deploy it to safe bet. was a success. So there you go, it was warm momentum. So I think we're going to put Ace Perry in a match today. Maybe give him a win, see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in a minute with the the the, the card for the show, basically. Right, so here we are. First match to kick off the show. Ace Perry defeated Rip, uh, Rip Bison uh, with a German suplex into a super kick. Okay. Um, segment got a 42. Crowd was into it sort of with a 23. Wrestling got a 38. Ace Perry was the better worker out the two with a 40. He did seem off his game though, but it gets the show off to a strong start, which is what we like. Let me just have a look at the dirt sheet, see if there's anything we can learn from this. Ace Perry got a bonus for a great gimmick. Bonus, bonus. Um, Penalised for inconsistency, so it was Rip Bison and Stamina. Okay. Right, so after the match, we had a character development segment with Ace Perry, got 32. Um, unfortunately, he was not, he was very poor when trying to improve dialogue, so we need to try and improvise, sorry, dialogue. So we need to try and remember that. But the angle did get the crowd hotter, so that's good. Um, the second match of the night was Shane Mercer, who defeated Rohit Raju by pin, in 15 minutes by pinfall. The match was designed so that the wrestlers could go out there and try and steal the show. The second one got 56, 31 for the crowd rating, and 48 for the wrestling, which is pretty good. Shane Mercer with a 53 rating, and then Rohit Raju with a 43 rating. Um, Rohit Raju making his debut as well. They have great chemistry. So that's good. So we can count on them to have a good match. And then the next match was Tutti Lin with a surprise win versus Vita Von Starr. Segment got a 22. The crowd was not into it at all. 17 and the wrestling was only a 30. So in hindsight, maybe we should have just kept this one to the pre-show. But um, I'm trying to kind of push Tutti Lin a little bit. I think she's got good superstar look about her, I think she'd be a good wrestler, but yeah, maybe next time I might put it as the opening match or something. Um, after the match, Vita Von Starr attacked Tootie Lin, got a 28 for the segment. And then in the main event, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bout that had great heat and good wrestling, Rhino, Tal, uh, Calvin Tankman and Shane Taylor defeated Frontman Ja, Colt Cabana, and Lee Johnson when Rhino pinned Frontman Jat with a pile driver. So Frontman Jat and um, Rhino are in a storyline. So at the moment, I'm pushing it. Um, they're going to eventually have a one-on-one -on -one match for the title. But yeah, we got 50 for the segment, 30 for the crowd, 43 for the wrestling. The best worker of the match was Calvin Tampton with a 53. Um, Lee Johnson did pretty well as well. Rhino was unfortunately... The weak link in this match, so hmm, maybe I need to change it up. Maybe I need to rethink this a bit. Okay, all right, right. So that's the show finished with. The show did increase in popularity in one region, and the overall rate was 43, and we got 200 people in. Right. Excellent. Address the locker room. So we'll go front man jar. I forgot to do a uh, uh, promo for Frontman Jar that would have got the show rating up. Right, there we go. They're very happy. Financial report. There we go. So ticket sales was one thousand two hundred. We got two hundred and four for merchandise. The workers cost us two grand. Five hundred and sixty for the show cost. Uh, hundred for marketing. Overall loss was one thousand two hundred fifty six. Now that would have been less if I hadn't booked. The six man at the end. If I just if I keep it to three matches one on ones, each show, each show, then we'll probably be all right. But sometimes you just need to give the crowd a little bit more. But yeah, ten thousand. We've got ten thousand in the bank. I reckon by the end of the month we'll probably have about another grand or two. So it kind of we kind of break even most months, which is pretty good. Just close that popularity recap. We've gone up to twenty now. 
absolutely smashing it at the moment. Now, I watched Curb Stomp City um, do his latest video and he got his popularity up to 20. So he automatically then went for a broadcasting deal with YouTube and um, IWTV. And the next show he did, it cost him a hell of a lot in... I don't know what it was in costs to do it. So I'm not going to automatically go and apply for, um, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to attempt to get a broadcast in, but we will have a look. So high spots, independent wrestling and YouTube are available to us now that we're tiny. Um, but yeah, like I said, I might change my mind next episode. I'm going to see how Curve Stomp City gets on with it first, but I think, by the looks of it, I think you, it's not a good idea to go for the first deal you can get. And we're not exactly in the red at the moment, so we're all right. We've made a little bit of money each month. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip forward 27 days and I'll be back in a sec. Right, we're back. And unfortunately, I have some sad news. So SCW finished last out of the three in the Great Legs Regional Battle this month. Because of this, attendances for SCW shows in this region will be reduced by 10% for the next month, which is not good at all, especially as we've been getting a lot of positives lately. So it's a bit of frustrating. Um, as I said before, after the last show, we'd probably be all right financially. We've got £13,000. So considering that we haven't got a TV deal, we're doing all right. We're building slowly, and that's what I want to see. All right, let's get on with the next show see how we get on right as usual we will select this one here um, booking team meeting we'll spend some creative energy I think we'll go with a storyline idea this time so there's no restrictions on this idea I have no idea how to implement this by the way but we'll see um, your purchase storyline idea, the details are shown below. You must choose a name for it so you can do anything. I'll just put storyline one. Okay. You must give the idea a unique name so that the game knows. Um, that's fine. Right. And then we'll do another character idea as well. Um, your purchase character idea, success rate and near certainty. There are no restrictions. So what we're going to do then is... Close that now. We're done with that, and then I'll figure out who I'm gonna. I might. I think I might give it to um, Bastard Cassidy. Give him a bit of a push as well. Hopefully, it'll help. So Rhino has been talking to Bradley Prescott for a lot recently. It seems to be having some degree of influence over him, over his behaviour. So hopefully, that's a good thing. Alice Crawley brightened the backstage area simply by being so cheerful and fun to be around. Hulk Abana helped create a great atmosphere backstage when he pulled a great rib on the entire locker room that had everyone laughing afterwards. The backstage rumour mill has been an overdrive after Warhorse and Bradley Prescott fourth apparently got into a heated argument. Oh, that's not good. So that was one negative though. So it's not too bad. Right, so what I'm going to do before I do anything else, I think I'm going to give that creative idea to Bradley Prescott the fourth. Um, t -t 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 created idea. Deploy created idea. And it was a complete success. He's now got warm momentum. And then what I'm thinking of doing is storyline. So deploy creative idea. Oh, so we can do a Lee Johnson creative idea, but he's already in a storyline, so we can't do that. So we go storyline one. Okay, so we're deploying the storyline. The storyline idea has been deployed, and the impact of storyline is next. Time over the banks. Okay. Um, I've got no idea what happens now, because there's no, there's no. Like these are the storylines already had. Let me know in the comment section what that actually does with the storyline idea. Okay, right. Let's crack on with the show. And I'll be back in a sec. Right, so we're back, and the first match of the show is um, Bradley Prescott the fourth defeating Nate Webb in 15, 14 minutes by pin four segment got a 31 unfortunately crowd uh, fortunately the crowd didn't care with the 16 wrestling was only a 28 
Bradley Prescott for the fourth is a terrible wrestler, but so is Nate Webb. Um, but yeah, not good at all. Don't know what else to say about it really. Um, we did a character development angle with Bradley Prescott the fourth. Got a forty, so again he might be decent on the mic, but not very good in the ring like a front man jar. We decided to do a match between Lee Johnson and Jimmy Young in a ladder match that Lee Johnson won. Um, we we had the match designed to revolve around a lot of high spots. The segment got a 47, crowd 24, 41 for the wrestling. Um, Lee Johnson was the standout performer out of the two. And Jimmy Young seemed off his game. The angle afterwards was Jimmy Young attacking Lee Johnson with a ladder. Got a 40 for the segment. The storyline between them advances with that. The next match, Alice Crawley defeated Ray Lynn. Got a 36 for the segment, 21 for the crowd, 33 for the wrestling. Um, Alice Crowley was the better worker out of the two. She's definitely one to watch out for, Alice Cro uh, Crowley. I think it's Crowley you pronounce it. I could be wrong. And then we did a... Hmm, this is weird. Okay, so I did exactly the same promo with Frontman Jar before, and it got like a 70 of rating, and this time it only got 51, so that's really weird. Okay, fair enough. Right, and then the main event in a, uh, an, about, an about that had great heat and decent wrestling. Calvin Tankman defeated Frontman Jar in a cage match in 18 minute 22 by pinfall with the Tankman driver following interference from Rhino. The match was designed to uh, tell a specific story. Um, during the match, we also had Rhino running and attack Jar. Calvin Tankman wins the heavyweight title. So I decided to pull the trigger earlier than I was going to do. I think Frontman Jar is better in a mid-card uh, feud with Rhino. And I think Calvin Tankman needs to be pushed as the main guy on our roster. Simply because his in-ring performance is usually pretty good. So I can rely on him to have a good main event match. Um, the second one got a 37. Crowd, got a 30, crowd was 33. Wrestling was 39. Calvin Tampton got a 45. He's a lot better wrestler than Frontman Jack. It, it's a shame we can't put mix them two together because Calvin Tampton with his worker abilities and then Frontman Jack with his mic abilities, we'd have like a really good worker on hand, but that's just how it is. Storyline one, storyline idea was deployed and it was a success. So, okay. Um, unfortunately, this um, they didn't click either. And the fans did not like the finish to the match. So, But we did increase our popularity in one region. We only got a 37 overall rating. And we got 196 people turned up. Um, so we do a front man jar. I'm going to give him a hug. And then who else? Who else? Who else? I'm going to... Good performance. There we go. Okay, so financially we made 1,176 ticket sale, uh, money from ticket sales. That was expected because of the 10% decrease. Merchandise, we only got 200. The workers cost us 1,550, 581 for show cost, 100 for marketing. Overall loss was 855, which isn't too bad. It's a lot better than it was at the last show. So that's good. And then we've increased our popularity again to 21. So that's really good as well. So we're consistently increasing our popularity every show. So I, th I what I'm what I'm hoping to do is by the time I get to say, I, I don't I need to have a look and look at the size. So at the moment we are obviously we're tiny. So to I think when we get to small, which is thirty five, which is a while away, um, we will then look at TV deals. Then let's just have a look and again see if anything's. Yeah, still the same. I don't think that's going to change until we get to 35 now. But yeah, right. Okay, so we need to defend the tag titles because they haven't been defended in 120 days. And the women's title hasn't been defended in 57 days. But I think the reason why the women's title hasn't been defended... Oh, no, that's not the case. I think Heather Reckless was booked elsewhere uh, on the show that we just did because I was going to book her in a title match. She is the champion, isn't she? Yeah, Heather Reckless. So we'll try and put her on the next show hopefully um, and the next show is not for 34 days so you know the score I'll be back in a minute with the next show right we're back um, we've had we've lost the battle again so SCW finished last out of three 
in the Great Lakes Regional Battle this month. Because of this, attendance of the SCW shows in this region will be reduced by 10% from next month. Now, I don't know whether that means just 10% or that means 10% on top of the other 10% from last month. I'm hoping it's not that. Um, Frontman Jar's contract was expiring, so we've offered him a new contract. And we're also going to bring in Kylie Ray, who's from the Great Lakes area, Great Lakes area, um, former AEW and uh, now currently going to be NXT. Um, she's in, she's on that WWE ID program, whatever. So I'm assuming she'll just be carrying on working the independence, and then WWE can call it whenever they want. So um, we're going to do an all championship show here for this one. Uh, heavyweight tag team and women's title will be defended hopefully as long as everybody's available um and i think that's it pretty much oh we've met we've had a bit of a loss here eight thousand six hundred ninety. what where, where where's that come from um finance performance 2807 something's gone wrong here sponsorship no workers 5,486 I think it might be somebody that I've signed and it's they've got a massive contract. Um, where does it fit a contract? So 40, 40, 40, 240, 70. I don't know, I'll just keep going. I won't keep repeating everything. I'll be, we'll be there all day. So he's on 300, but that's fine. 140, that's fine. 200 for Jake Christ. Ah, that's why I've ballsed up. I need to negotiate this down. So I think I offered, I accidentally applied the wrong template. So I think we might, we might come unstuck here. Oh no, okay, he's happy with that. Right, okay, so we won't, we won't have Lee Johnson on this show. Let's just check to see if we've got anybody else on here that we shouldn't have on big contracts. That's took a massive dent out of our finances. Right, so that's that then. Uh, there we go. Let's see how we get on. Hopefully, Johnson will agree to that new contract and we won't have to give him £6,000 per month. Um, I'm going to go for a slightly bigger capacity stadium because I think we are maxing out that 250. Um, 200, sorry. We've already maxed that out. So we go 250 to 300. So we've got this uh, Waukesha County Expo Center, 250 max, only going to cost us 150, so that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. Booking team meeting, so we'll go spend creative energy, we'll go storyline idea, um, safe bet, there's no restrictions with this one, and then we'll go gimmick idea for a change, let's see what happens here, likely to succeed. And then we'll go character idea. As well. Oh, no, we can't, can we? Character idea, yeah, we can. Uh, likely to succeed. Right, so that's that. Uh, how much have we got left? So we've got 296 left. So we've still got plenty left to play with. Locker room incidents. So we can bring in um, Ryan Mooney. So he's an unemployed worker, lives nearby. He's not worked for SCW before. 29 years old and that's uh 29 years old and doesn't does not have a defined personality type. That's that's fine. We'll bring him in. Um, Isaiah Broner has come to you backstage with an angle idea. It's all automatically added to your store creative. Training, training. And that's it. That's not that's not too bad. Inspire. Right. So that's that. And then what we'll do is before we do anything else, we're gonna. So what we're going to do is creative idea. So we'll go character idea for him. Ah, chilly momentum. So that didn't work out. Gimmick details. Uh, prepare a gimmick change. No. Where's the, how do you apply the gimmick idea? Uh, creative idea? No, I've already done that. So we've got a gimmick idea, but did I just use that? I don't know. Right. Uh, let's try somebody else. Gringo Loco, create creative idea. No. 
So let me know in the comments section what I've done wrong. Where's the gimmick? How do you apply the gimmick creative idea? Anyway, right. Yeah, going back to this. Right then, I'll be back in a sec. Right, we're back. And um, the first match of the show is the Killers defeating Desperate Measures. So Desperate Measures is the tag team of Gringo Loco and Atticius Koga uh, in a dog collar match, which is Mad Dog Conley's specialist to do with the chain. Um, the Killers make defence number two of the tag titles. Um, Atticius Koga carried the match in terms of in-ring performance. Unfortunately, Mad Dog Conley sustained a broken nose, which is a shame. Um, and um, yeah, but basically the segment got a 45, 32 for the crowd, 53 for the wrestling. Um, Atticius Koga with a 61 in-ring rating, which is surprising actually, because I'd assume Gringo Loco would have been better. But I think because it being a bit of a hardcore type match, uh, Atticius Koga is a bit of a specialist in hardcore matches. So maybe moving forward, we might need to put Atticius Koga in more hardcore matches. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, not too bad to start the show, Mad Dog Conley. Uh, Atissius Tukoga has got heat backstage following his match after injuring Mad Dog Conley. That's a shame. Uh, match two, Elise Crowley defeated uh, Navia in a Dixieland match. So I'm basically trying to just do all gimmick matches just to see how they how the wrestlers get on with them. Second got a 45, 26 for the crowd, um, 50, uh, sorry, 41 for the wrestling. And the best worker was Navia. Nevia, sorry, um, but basically the reason why I went with this match was because Heather Reckless, again, is not available, so I might have to look at stripping her of the women's title if it carries on, which is a shame, because I was wanting to push her, but I suppose she prioritises TNA over us at the moment. And then in an angle, we did um, Frontman Jack putting a promo, on Rhino and only got 47 again I don't understand why because he was getting like 70s before uh, do you know what it is it's probably because of the increase in popularity I remember last time when I did another save that happened so yeah that's a shame right um, Rhino underperformed um, in the angle but yeah frontman Jar did a masterful job of improvising interactions with the crowd Rick Bryson could have done a better job as the road agent right um, and then we had frontman Jar defeated Rhino in an I Quit match. Um, 41 for the segment, 31 for the crowd, 39 for the wrestling. Frontman Jar has a in-ring performance of 39. Rhino with a 38. The storyline advances. Um, frontman Jar was really off his game, unfortunately. And then obviously Rick Bryson again. We need to get rid of Rick Bryson as a road agent. Um, in fact, I'm going to do that now before I forget. Bryson, where are you? Right, that's that. So, carry on. And uh, we did an angle afterwards with Rhino post-match attacking, sorry, post-match attack on Frontman Ja to advance the storyline further. And then the main event, Calvin Tankman defeated Shane Taylor um, with the Tankman driver, this match was designed to be a car crash stunt show full of crazy moves and dangerous bumps. Calvin Tankman makes successful defence number one of the heavyweight title. The segment got 57, 33 for the crowd, 52 for the wrestling. Calvin Tankman with a 58 performance. Shane Taylor not too bad as well, so that's good. We increase our popularity in one region. Overall rating of 45, which is an improvement on the last show. And 214 people turned up, which is again, which is our biggest crowd. So that's good. Address the locker room. So we'll go Rhino. Good performance. Um, and then we'll do Alice Crowley as well. Injury review. So broken nose. Only available for only injured for seven days. Um, financial report. We made one thousand two hundred eighty four from ticket sales. Two hundred eighteen from merchandise. Workers cost us just under two thousand dollars. Show cost 577, marketing as always is 100. Overall loss was 1,135, so not the best. But our finances would have been better. Look, there we go, increase our popularity again. What I'm thinking of doing after December is I'm thinking of going um, bi-weekly. So one, one show every two weeks, so basically two shows a month. 
Let me know in the comments section if you think that's a good idea or a bad idea because I won't be doing it until the next show anyway. So yeah, just let me know if you think it's a good idea from your experiences or not. Right, we'll have, we've got enough time for one more show. So we'll be back in a minute with the next show. All right, we're back. Um, we've got some good news. We finished second out of three in the Great Legs Regional Battle this month, so that's good. Finishing second means there's no bonuses or penalties, so we don't have to worry about attendance. Um, but yeah, uh, Champion Tankman's getting a bit of interest. He's getting one-night deals with a few companies out there. At the moment, we don't have the finances to be offering exclusive written contracts to people. Finances have got up a bit, which is good. Um, it's uh, officially Christmas Day on the game, so happy Christmas to everybody. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it as far as I know, so we'll just crack on. Um, I'm going to see if Heather Reckless is available, because if she's not, then I'm stripping her of the title, because it's getting ridiculous now. But we'll see how it goes. Let's have a look in a second. Right, so we'll pick this one again. Uh, no, no pre-show incidents. Okay, uh, I'm not going to bother with the creative meeting this time. Locker room incidents. Apparently, Brian Gorey and Jay Bradley have bonded recently. Uh, one of the main discussion points backstage is the news that Tootie, Lou, Tootie Lynn, sorry, and Tristan Ty are now apparently dating. Oh, that's good. Another, another romance matchup. Uh, Rip Bryson's come to you backstage with an idea for a creative finish. Uh, same with Alice Crowley. Training, training. Uh, to E. Lynn helped create a fun atmosphere when she pulled a classic rib on Alice Crowley that had everyone laughing. Cheech gave the locker room a lift when he provided a uh, free drinks for everybody. It's very nice of him. Right, address locker room, don't need to do that. So, Cheech hasn't wrestled for us for ages, so I'm going to put him in a match. So, the first match we're going to have is Cheech. Oh, I didn't check to see if Heather Reckless is available. Is she available? No, she's not. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to strip her of the women's title because it's getting ridiculous. She's not been able to defend it once. I might even get rid of her at this rate if it carries on. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll crown a new women's champion on this show. So we'll have Cheech versus uh, Rhino. No, we won't go 20 minutes. That's asking a bit too much for them. We'll go 17 minutes. We'll have Rhino win. Um, but we will keep strong Cheech. Uh, open match, like so. And uh, I've just realised that I've been <laughs> doing this and I was meant to do this offline. So um, we'll just quickly finish this. We'll knock it down to 15. And then I'll be back in a sec with the rest of the show, rest of the card book. Sorry about that. Right, we're back. Um, first match of the night was Rhino defeating Cheech with the Gore. Just a, basically a squash match for, well, not a squash match because we did keep um, Cheech strong as well. But basically it's just a, a match to give Rhino some heat in his feud with Frontman Jack. Segment got a 36. Crowd got a 25, wrestling rating was 35, um, Rhino had an in-ring performance of 40, Cheech was a bit rusty because obviously he hasn't wrestled for a while, so, but yeah, started the show strong, and then we had Frontman Ja cutting a promo on, um, sorry, Frontman Ja and Rhino cutting promos on each other after the match, um, Rhino worked the crowd well using the freedom to improvise to his advantage, so that's good, keeps the storyline strong. Um, and then in a uh, about that had great heat and good wrestling, Joshua Bishop defeated Isaiah Broner. We've got 48 for the segment, 32 for the crowd, 45 for the wrestling. Um, Joshua Bishop was slightly better worker out of the two. And then we did a post-match angle with um, Broner attacking Joshua Bishop, got 49. And then in the main event, we had Kylie Ray, Kylie Ray defeating Nevia um, with the super kick. She wins the women's title. The second got a 44. Crowd 
um, rating was 30. Wrestling was wrestling rating was 39. And then Navia, Navia, sorry, Navia is the stand-up performer out of the two. Um, Carly Rae was a bit rusty, so hopefully we'll put in a few more matches. And then to end the show, we did a post-match celebration with Carly Rae holding up the title. So a good feel-good moment for the crowd to leave the show on. Um, the show increased the popularity in one region. We got an overall rating of 41, and we got 250 people in, which was amazing. So we'll go Carly Rae. Give her a hug, and then we'll go um, Navia. Oh, Navia, great performance. There you go. And then financial report: we got one thousand five hundred from ticket sales, two hundred and fifty from merchandise. Workers was one thousand four hundred and ten. Show cost five hundred and sixty three. Marketing as always was a hundred. So we only lost three hundred and twenty three dollars for this show, which is really good. Right, let's have a look at the popularity. We've increased the popularity again to twenty-four. I don't, I don't, I think, I think, I don't know. I think I'm very lucky to be getting popularity rise every show because I know Curb Stomp City went um quite a few shows before he improved his popularity in the last episode I watched with his local to global. So I don't understand what I'm doing that he's not doing because I'm pretty much learned a lot about TW9 by watching his stuff and kind of just copying him in a way. Um but yeah so we we got one we got 8940 available for the month. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna skip forward to the start of the first of January and we'll see where everything is in the in the wrestling scene then before I go. So just bear with us. Right I'm back and I just thought I'd do the start of the year so we go through everything um let's have a look at annual awards so male wrestler of the year was cody rhodes female wrestler of the year was rhea ripley who's won it three years in a running now match sorry male tag team of the year was penta and ray phoenix um female tag team of the year was Britt baker and jamie hater Male Young Wrestler of the Year was Mascara, Mascara Dorada, uh, who's won it two years in a row now. Um, female Young Wrestler of the Year was Elena Blake, who's won it twice in a row now. Male Veteran Wrestler of the Year, Eli Drake, which is LA Knight. And then the Female, version, female Veteran Wrestler of the Year was Charlotte Flair. Uh, male Independent Wrestler of the Year was uh, Takeshita. Won it twice in a row, and the female independent wrestler of the year was Takumi Aroha. Aroha, sorry, company year was WWE. He's won it three years in a row now. Uh, most improved company year was DPW. Match of the year was LA Knight defeating Cody Rhodes. At, uh, Money in the Bank got a ninety nine rating. Bloody hell. Uh, card of the year was Money in the Bank two thousand twenty five. Got a ninety three rating. Manager of the year was Gado. Female manager of the year was Tia uh, Thea Trinidad, who's um, Selena Vega. Uh, Vicky Guerrero won in the year before. Okay. Um, male play by play commentator of the year, Ian Riccoboni. Female one was Ai Hara. Male color commentator of the year was Justin Funder Liger. Female one was Bull Meccano. Referee of the year was Charles Robinson. Female referee of the year was, sorry, pardon me, Aubrey Edwards. Um, so that's the awards done. Let's just have a look at the inbox items and the awards we've already looked. So yeah, we finished last out of the three, so we're gonna have a ten percent less attendance, which is a shame. Right. Um, I'm trying to figure out what else. Should we have a look at? Let's have a look at the other promotions before we go. We'll look at the big ones. We'll just look at. We'll look at AW and WWE. So AW. Let's first of all look at who the champions are. So the Continental Champion is Sammy Guevara. Uh, TBS Champion is Athena. TNT Champion is MJF. Women's World Champion is Mercedes Monet. The AW World Champion is Okada. Hold on, let's, have look, let's see if there's any weird previous champions. So Eddie Kingston won it and then, and then Okada won it off him. Uh, Shida, Mercedes Monet before that. MJF beat Claudio. Before that, it was Swerve. Mercedes Monet has won it after beating Willow Nightingale. This is the one that, that 
that confuses me a bit. Jack Perry was the champion. He made eight successful defences. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know he's a star and the rising, but to pull the trigger on him so quickly. Um, but yeah, tag team champions, FTR. Trios, trios champions is AR Fox, Carl Fletcher and Mark Davis. And that's it for that. Um, let's have a look and see if there's any weird tag teams that have been made. If it lets me, where is it? View profile, there we go. Tag teams. So I don't think there's any. Cajun Starks is a team that's not familiar. I don't think anyway. Uh, no, oh, no. Um, obviously got the team of Hater and Britt Baker. QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes, The Righteous. Thunderstorm, I think that's a new one, I think. Let's have a look at the stables. So, no new members of the Bang Bang Gang. Um, we've got co-leaders in Claudio and John Moxley. Don Callis family has only got Trent Barretta and Takeshita. Uh, Malachi Black, Brian Cage, Ricky Starks and Julia Hart are now the House of Black. The uh, Fassian in, got in Gobeline, or whatever they're called. Same members. Same members for that. Same members for that. Same members for that. Um, Ray Phoenix and Penta are part of the patriarchy. patriarchy. Um, Ray Phoenix is actually the deputy now. And then Undisputed Kingdom is the same. Right, so let's have a look at WWE before we go. Actually, we'll have a look at NXT. No, we won't bother with NXT. Raven. Okay, so Raven is part of NXT, I'm assuming as a road agent. Let's just check he's not champion anywhere. So Tala Tonga, who can't remember what his name was in New Japan. Anyway, he's the NXT Heavyweight Champion, Eddie Forks, the Heritage Cup Champion, Ridge Holland's the North American Champion, and then uh, Idris, Anofe, and Malik Blay, the Tag Champions. Kalani Jordan is the Kalani Jordan is the Women's Champion, and then Adrena Risso is the Women's North American Champion. Right, so WWE, there we go. Right, so let's look at the champion. I don't went too far. Right, so LA Knight's the unit, yeah, undisputed WWE champion. He beat Cody Rhodes, who beat Roman Reigns. So Cody Rhodes basically has held the title for the whole the whole of the save up until he lost to LA Knight. Uh, we've got Braun Strowman is the Intercontinental Champion. He defeated Rey Mysterio, who defeated J JD McDonough. Speed champion is JD. Sorry, Javon Evans. Tag Team Champions is Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, who beat Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford, who beat uh, Tongala and Tama Tonga. And then United States Champion is Trick Williams. It's nice to see WWE calling up um, NXT wrestlers. Uh, Trick Williams beat Kevin Owens. The Women's Champion is Bianca Belair, who defeated Charlotte Flair, who defeated... Uh, Nia Jax Women's Tag Team Champion is who I call the Raver Girls Catania Chance and Caden Carter Women's World Champion Io Sky defeated Liv Morgan World Heavyweight Champion is still I don't know Gunther lost it to CM Punk won it back and then the World Tag Team Champions is Finn Balor and JD McDonough who beat, who beat J, uh, Damian Priest and Sami Zayn so they floated around the place a bit as well the tag titles right so let's have a look at the See if there's any weird tag teams. Chase using on the NXT main roster now, which is good to see. We've got Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville as a tag team, but they were a tag team before. Gallus has been called up. It's good. We've got a tag team of Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. Uh, tag team of Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. We've got Natalia and Tamina that are still there. Uh, but yeah, um, I think that's it for the tag teams. Right, so let's have a look at the stables and then we'll call it a day, I think. So we've got American Made, which is quite hilarious because you've got Kevin Owens in there. 
Seth Rollins is in there as well. I don't know where um, Brutus Creed's gone, but yeah, you've got Chad Gable as the uh, the leader, and you've got Seth Rollins as deputy, and then you've got Damage Control, that hasn't changed, uh, LWR hasn't changed, nor has Legrado Del Fantasma. The Bloodline is the same. Um, Final Testament is the same, I think, yeah. Same for Judgment Day. And then you've got the Pure Fusion Collective that's the same. And then the Wyatt Six is the same as well. So nothing too major. Uh, WWE's got 741 million. Jesus Christ. Right, uh, that is it. We're going to call it a day for this episode. If you want me to show you anything else that's going on in the wrestling world on the game, let me know in the comments section. If you don't like me going through that bit, let me know. Um, I'm always listening to what you lot like and don't like so I can make a better video for you. Thank you if you've watched all the way to the end. I do appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll be back Wednesday with an episode of the AEW Save. So please give that a watch as well. And I'll speak to you next Monday on this save. All the best. Bye.